In this video, you'll see how to clean a stick vac. Hi, I'm Mark. In this video, we are going to look at how to clean a cordless stick vac. They're all essentially the same, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're made by the same company and they just put different branding on it. But essentially, it's a motor, a canister, the uh, long tube stick, and then it has the vacuum head here with the rotating brush. And there's a little more to it than you might think to clean it. It's more than just emptying out the canister, but it's really simple. I clean this just about after every use, at least every major use, and it keeps it working really, really well. So let's take a look at how to clean a stick vac. The first thing I'm gonna do is separate this handle unit. And we do that by pressing down here, and then that whole thing pulls apart from the stick. Now the most basic thing, if you put this over a trash can and push this lever, you see the bottom opens up. I'm doing it here just for sake of clarity, but if you do this over a trash can, all that will empty just like it emptied onto the towel I have out here. So next up, we're gonna separate this housing from the motor. And to do that, you push that button and it hinges at the bottom, okay? So after we're done cleaning this, we're going to stick those two pins back in and then it'll snap together. So you push that button. And if you wanna wipe this down, I probably will, just to get some of the dust out. Be really careful not to get water in here because there's a motor in there but you can actually uh, wipe that out. There is a little bit of dust, as you can see, but we're gonna concentrate on this unit here, where the dust and the dirt all collects. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take this out. Now, as best as I can tell, a filter should really fit in here. Mine did not come with a filter, nor can I find a filter that fits this online. So if anyone knows of a filter that fits this, please let me know down below and I will post it in the um, description area. So now what we're gonna do is clean all of this hair and dust and dirt. Now this is just metal and plastic. So you can actually hose this off or rinse it under a sink. Be careful that all of this hair doesn't go down the drain, however, or you're going to have another problem altogether, that being a plug drain. So we can just peel that off and I'm gonna clean that off as best I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and just run this underwater. But I'm gonna give it a good pound over a garbage can. And then we'll rinse it off, get it really clean. There are no moving parts, so I'm simply going to rinse this really, really well. And I'm gonna do the same for the housing. This is just plastic. So we can rinse it. Be careful, there are electrical connectors here. Make sure this dries thoroughly before you put it back. Now it bears repeating. Make sure this is thoroughly dry before you put it together because these are electrical contacts and it runs all the way through to the bottom. And this is what powers the brushes. So if you don't want to run this underwater, I completely understand. I'm going to blow this out with some compressed air and put it in the Florida sun for a little bit and make sure this is thoroughly dry. If you want to avoid that, just wipe this with a damp cloth and it'll come pretty clean. As for the motor housing, I wouldn't do too much with this. If you want, you can just clean out some of the dirt and debris. Probably isn't really necessary. You want to be really careful with this because you don't want to get this wet at all or you're probably going to ruin your unit. All right, for the base, the first thing we want to do is take this out and that's just a simple spring right here. And then we're gonna take these wheels out. Be really careful because the wheels and the axle are not attached. If you lose that axle, you're going to have some problems. So just get something small to pry that out with. 
just like that. And I don't know how well you can see this, but the axle pulls away from the wheel itself. So be really careful. So I'm going to take those little pieces, and there's a lot of dirt and gunk that can get in there. So I'm just going to wipe them all off with a moist paper towel. And those be nice and clean. And I'm just going to kind of look inside. Um, usually there's not much caught in there, but if there's something caught in these openings, you can use a Q-tip or something to get that out. Same thing with this opening. Um, if it's dirty, a moist towel is about all you need. So how do we tackle that? Well, I have this little tool. It's pretty neat. Um, I ordered something from Amazon, some bags or something, and they sent this along. You can use any type of a cutting tool, a razor blade. I really like this because it has a brush on one end and it has this little hook with a razor blade in the other. So all I need to do is go right along this and it slices all that hair right away. And then all I have to do is pick that off. It makes that job a lot easier. But you want to get all of, you know, anything that's wrapped around here, whether it be animal fur or if you live with people who have long hair. It's amazing how much people shed, just like animals. So we're going to take all that off. This is probably the most time consuming. It's going to take a couple of minutes, so I'm just going to jump ahead to where I get this whole thing cleaned off. Now, if you want to, you can pull these caps off. Be real careful because there's a washer in there and you don't want to lose that little washer. But you can clean the inside of that out. Brush it, get really nice and clean. Then you can Clean this and wipe it down. The cleaner these are, the better they're going to work, the better they're going to spin, and they're not going to get jammed up. You can see there's still a little hair on here. I'm going to wipe everything off, get it really clean. All right, that looks pretty good. We're going to put that little washer back on. And put that cap back on. Make sure it snaps in place. And then we're going to connect that once again. Drop that in. That's probably the a tricky part too is getting that square piece in there. It wants to spin as you put it back. There we go. And now this is all cleaned. We're going to put our wheels back now. Just slide an axle in. And then that snaps in place. You'll probably need something to really push it down with. You'll think it snapped, but it might not be. I'm gonna, there we go. We're going to take the axle, thread it on, snap it in place, and then I'll make sure that you're at snap. There we go. Okay, so now we have our wheels, and we have our brush. And everything has been wiped down. Time to reassemble. Now if you have a filter, you can put the filter in here. Like I said, I haven't been able to find one. This slides in the top. Just press it in. It doesn't really click into place or anything. Just make sure that it's in there. You can still see a little bit of dust in there. If you want to really be meticulous, you could get a Q-tip or something and get in there, but it's clean. I washed it off with water. All right, then we are going to reattach it to the motor. Like I said, that's very simple. Oops, almost did it upside down. All you do is slide those pins in right there, and then snap. It's that easy. Take it off, push a button, and it hinges open. Now. Now it works. So all we have to do is 
attach this to the base. Now you might be wondering, what about cleaning the inside of this tube? It's just a tube. There really isn't much you have to do to that. So remember, there are those metal pins in there and they line up with the plug on that handle and just snap it together. And there you go. Let's look at the brush. The brush works. And this thing is crystal clean, ready to go. Keep your unit clean like this and it'll last you a long, long time. This also goes for a really long time on a single charge. But I like to charge mine every time I put it away. That's all there is to it. Keep your vacuum clean. It'll last a long, long time. This is actually the only vacuum that I use since moving down to Florida. Uh, we really don't have carpeting. All of our floors are tile and we use this every single day. Keeps it really clean and it's a lot easier than pulling out a big vacuum. So I hope you enjoyed this video as always. I appreciate giving us a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking my face in the corner and don't forget to ring that bell icon. That way you'll know when I post new videos. I'm Mark and this is the Average Me Channel. Mm -hmm.